Hello and welcome to Spectrum News at 12. I am Janice Cobham coming to you live from the beautiful hills of Ibiakuran. Let's take a look at the headlines. President Buhari to attend Chad Transitional Leaders Inauguration. Federal government raids into Dangote Kogi government disputes. Plus, North Korea says missile launches were a nuclear attack simulation on South. Details of the stories and more in a moment. Many thanks for joining us on the News at 12. We'll begin our news with a report that President Muhammad de Buhari will today attend the investiture ceremony of Muhammad Idris Itno as president of the transitional team in the Republic of Chad for two years. According to a statement signed by the president's senior special assistant on media and publicity, Gaba Shehu, the ceremony which will hold at the capital in Jamena will further accentuate negotiations and peaceful and harmonious return to the democratic process in the country following the passing of the former president Idris Itno in April 2021. Meanwhile, the president Muhammadu Buhari, Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki, and his counterpart from Kwara State has rejoiced with Muslim faithfuls as they celebrate Eid al Malud. In his goodwill message, President Buhari urged Muslims to practice the noble and shining virtues of the Prophet Muhammad, noting that the Prophet became famous for his life of humility, justice, and fairness. According to reports, the President's spokesman Malam Gaba Shehu, in a statement in Abuja, quoted the President as saying, the Prophet attracted people to Islam through personal examples of honesty, trustworthiness, justice, patience, and tolerance. And away from that, the federal government has waded into the raging dispute between the Kogi state government and the Dangote group over the ownership of Dangote Cement PLC and the alleged non-payment of taxes and revenues due to the state government by the company. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Nia Debayo, said the manner the Kogi state government was going about the imbroglio was capable of eroding investors' confidence in the Nigerian economy as it is contradiction of the noble efforts of the Buhari's government to attract investment into the country. According to Adebayo, the view of the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment is that such dispute between a state government and any industry within the state should be taken to the court to allow to deal the law to deal with the issues rather than take laws into their own hands. Recall that Kogi State Government had last Wednesday sealed Dangote Cement's factory located in Obajana over alleged tax evasion and equity ownership in an exercise that several staff of the Dangote cement were pelated with gun bullets. As the battle against insecurity continues, the federal government has earmarked 1.35 trillion naira to prosecute the ongoing anti-insurgency fight in the country. This was contained in the 2023 budget proposal presented to the National Assembly by President Muhammadu Buhari on Friday. Reports say out of the stated amount, the Ministry of Defence and the Armed Forces have been allocated over 1.248 trillion naira to fight Boko Haram, bandits and other anti-insurgency wars in the 2023 appropriation bill. With personnel expenditure gulping over 1 trillion naira, Overhead cost 90.961 billion and capital expenditure 156.294 billion naira. Reports say of the 18 military and defense agency allocated, the total sum, the Nigerian Army, Nigerian Air Force, and the Nigerian Navy will get 638.1 billion, 
while 174.4 billion naira and 158.7 billion naira respectively the three forces got the largest chunk of the record military project Meanwhile, the federal government borrowed 1.46 trillion naira from the Central Bank of Nigeria through Ways and Means Advances in August 2022. The total federal government's borrowing from CBN rose from 20.61 trillion naira in July 2022 to 22.07 trillion in August 2022. According to data from the CBN, the federal government borrowed a total of 4.61 trillion naira from the Apex Bank between January and August. Meanwhile, the 22.07 trillion naira owed the Apex Bank by the federal government is not part of the country's total public debt stock, which stood at 48.84 trillion naira as of June 2022, according to the Debt Management Office. On the fight against drugs, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency has intercepted 2,465,000 tablets of tramadol, weighing 2,356 kilograms smuggled through the Motala Mohammed International Airport in Keja, Lagos State. The NDLEA spokesperson Femi Baba Femi, in a statement, said the seizure was worth 1 billion 40 million naira in street value. This came a week after about 13.5 million pills of the same drug worth over 8.8 .8 billion naira were recovered by operatives of the NDLEA from one of the mansions of a billionaire drug baron in the Victoria Garden City, Lagos. On developments on the ongoing all Taft saga, ex-militant leader, government Ekpumupolo, popularly known as Tom Polo, and security officials have uncovered 42 more tapping points by crude oil bunkers on the nation's oil pipelines in two states of Delta and Bayelsa, bringing the total to 58. The breakthrough came as bunkers, angry with the leader of the defunct movement for the emancipation of the Niger Delta men for exposing their unlawful business in the past few weeks have reportedly sent threat messages to him and operatives of his security firm. Tampolo, who spoke to newsmen at Oboroza, the traditional headquarters of Baramatu Kingdom Wari Southwest Local Government Area, Delta State dismissed the threats by the oil bunkers. And back here in Aquabum State, Aquabum State Governor Domi Manuel is currently hosting the People's Democratic Party PDP faithfuls from all over the country in Rio as the party flags off its presidential elections campaigns today. Recall that Governor Domi Manuel had revealed to journalists at the Victor Ata International Airport shortly on arrival from outside the state that the state was fully prepared to host the event and called on party faithfuls to troop en masse to receive the party's presidential flag bearer and other dignitaries. The governor assured that the party has the human resources to prosecute successful campaigns. Government House correspondent Jane Uwa reports that top PDP bigwigs who had already arrived the state since yesterday for the event include Vice Presidential Governor Aminu Tambuwal, Bayelsa State Counterpart Dior Rediri, Celestino Mehia, and former Governor of Krasiva State Senator Liel Imoke, among other dignitaries. And still from Aquabum State, Reverend Father Donatis Ukpong, president of the Mobile Mana Foundation, has called for more investment in the health sector to retain medical practitioners and avoid brain drain in the sector in Aquabum State and Nigeria. Speaking with Spectrum Television on the celebration of the 22 World Mental Health Day with the theme, Making Mental Health and Wellbeing for All a Global Priority, Father Donatis, whose humanitarian foundation focuses on mental health, said there was hope for people living with mental health challenges. A correspondent completes the story. As the world celebrates World Mental Health Day today, 10th October 2022, people have been advised to protect each other's mental health, 
care for family and loved ones with mental health challenges and this abuse demands from needs preventing the treatment and rehabilitation of such patients. Speaking on the meats of the illness, Reverend Father Donate Zukbong had this to say. In a quiet state, it to we that, but we don't get on it that. That is to say, mental illness is caused by somebody outside, but it's not a sickness that develops within the person. Also speaking, Harry Uda, a human rights advocate who called for deliberate government's investment in the health sector, noted that a Kwaibom state in Nigeria has not fared well in prioritizing investment in the health sector. Um, not much has been done um, in the health sector uh, within the state and of course uh, at the national as well. Uh, and because we've been making advocacies, uh, the, the, the World Health Organization uh, says that the minimum you know, investment in the health sector that will ensure uh, access to health and will ensure that um, you know, uh, the health sector is well developed would be uh, between 15 to 23 percent of the budget, annual budget of a nation. World Mental Health is celebrated to create awareness and draw attention challenges can reclaim their life back and still go ahead to fulfill purpose. The advice is that of the World Mental Health, World International World Mental Health Federation theme. Make mental health care okay, and well-being for all a priority. A Kwaibom state government, Nigerian government should prioritize mental health in budget. And family members should consider well-being of their fellows as a priority. Francis Edit, Spectrum TV News. Thank you very much, Francis Edit, for that report. We move now to Africa, where Egypt's and Greece's foreign ministers have met in Cairo following controversial maritime and gas deals that their shared rival Turkey signed with a Libyan leader. Cairo and Athens have strengthened ties in recent years, including cooperation in developing energy resources, combating terrorism, and signing new maritime talks with his Egyptian counterpart, Sameh Sukri, focused on the me memorandums of understanding between Turkey and Abdul Hamid, uh, the leader of one of two competing governments in divided Libya. He said such agreements were a threat to regional stability. The Egyptian foreign minister, meanwhile, said Dinar's government has no authority to conclude such deals, given that its mandate expired following Libya's failure to hold nationwide elections in December last year. He called for the UN to take a clear position. Turkey seeks once again to take advantage of a turbulent situation in Libya in order to further destabilize the Mediterranean region and establish a regional hegemony. I was glad to see that all key stakeholders, as well as the European Union, have publicly denounced those plans. No one can build new facts on the basis of illegal and illegitimate actions. No one can ignore geography. No one can create a virtual world. Moving forward now, on the foreign scene, Russian President Vladimir Putin has signed a decree strengthening the defenses of the only bridge connecting Annex Crimea to the Russian mainland after a huge blast early Saturday severely damaged the structure. Putin will hold an operational meeting of his Security Council today, just two days after a massive explosion on a key strategic bridge linking Crimea and Russia. Reports say Putin has accused Ukraine's special services of causing the blast, which threatens Russian supply lines, though some real and vehicles assets has been restored. Meanwhile, Ukraine has celebrated the attack but not officially claimed responsibility. And still on the foreign scene, in recent weeks, Pyongyang has launched seven sets of missiles in response to U.S. and South Korea's drills. 
State media published extensive reports claiming the missiles were designed to carry nuclear weapons. They said the military practiced loading the missiles with tactical nuclear warheads in South Korea's military bases, ports and airports and said the launches were a warning to U.S. and South Korea. Meanwhile, U.S. and South Korea intelligence officials have been suggesting that the North may soon test a nuclear weapon for the first time since 2017, and experts believe it could also use the opportunity to detonate a smaller tactical device for the first time. And still to come in the news... Max Verstappen crowned F1 world champion at Japanese Grand Prix. Do stay with us. Our 2022 report of the National Insurance Commission, NICOM, has shown a decline from 40.3% in oil and gas retention proportion to 40.1%, a drop of 2.2 percentage points. The Commission has maintained that the performance in the oil and gas sector in terms of claims settlement has recorded some improvement compared to quarter two of the previous year a sustained market development and growing confidence in the industry, which would improve the negative regularities, peculiarities, I beg your pardon, and challenges of the section of the market. NICOM said the non-life insurer made progress in claim settlement as they recorded 85.7% of claim settlement ratio, an increase of some 43 points compared to its position of 42.8 percent recorded in the corresponding period of rising gas prices as marketers have hinted that the high exchange rate of dollar to naira is having a negative impact on importation national operations controller the independent petroleum marketers association of nigeria ipman mike osati said that independent marketers source dollars for importation from the black markets as a result Gas price will continue to increase until the Naira gets strengthened at the exchange market. He noted that gas consumers stood the risk of further price hike as long as dollar continued to strengthen 
apart from low gas supplies at the international markets, majorly due to the Russian-Ukraine war method. According to sources, the drop in output has been majorly due to the high-level theft, as well as oil and gas pipeline vandalism, which has left LNG operating at 60% capacity. In health, the National Agency for Food and Drugs Administration and Control has warned importers, distributors, retailers and consumers to avoid the importation, distribution, sale and use of substandard cough syrups made in India. NAFDAQ regulates and controls the manufacturing, importation, exportation, distribution, advertisement, sale and use of food, drugs, cosmetics, medical devices, packaged water, chemicals, as well as detergent children in Gambia. The four products are Prometazine Oral Solution, Cofex Malin Baby Cough Syrup, Makov Baby Cough Syrup, and Maghrib Cold Syrup. And still in health, no fewer than 200 Nigerian trained doctors have been licensed by the government of the United Kingdom in just one month. Checks on the website of the General Medical Council, the body which licenses and maintains the official register of medical practitioners in the UK, showed that the GMC licensed at least 200 Nigerian trained doctors between August 31, 2022 and September 30, 2022. The statistics also showed that between January 1, 2022 and September 30, 2022, about 1,307 doctors trained in Nigeria were licensed in the UK as Nigeria continues to battle one of the worst situations of sectorial instability in its history. His first score of the era device C goal for Ajax in a photo victory at Voldan. After enduring four games without a win, including losses to Liverpool, AZ Alkma and Napoli, Ajax has returned to his winning ways. Bassi scored his first goal for Ajax after joining Glasgow Rangers in the summer. The win came days after Ajax suffered a humiliating 6-1 home defeat to Napoli in the Champions League. And still in sports, Max Verstappen has been crowned a Formula One world champion following bizarre circumstances and a dominant victory at the Japanese Grand Prix. He the driver's title for the second time in his career as the race was red flagged due to rain. It was much shortened, seemingly leaving less points available for Verstappen's rival, Charles Lelec, crossing the line in the second. And on our entertainment news, the Muslim rights concern Murik has appealed to the National Assembly NAS to give the National Council for Arts and Culture powers to go after the reality television show Big Brother Naja for the purpose of stopping nudity. This was contained in a statement released in Abuja by the director of the Murik, Ishak Akintola. Akintola has expressed this pleasure regarding hesitations in giving the NCAC Director General news. He also stated that the BB Niger show is a luciferous venture, dragging Nigerian culture, values and norms to extinction. He further emphasized that NAS reluctance in response to the matter shows the weakness in Nigeria's legal system. And still in entertainment, Nigerian singer and songwriter Oyidamola Emmanuel, popularly known as Dami Crane, has publicly called out his colleague Davido over an alleged threat to life. Dami Crane on his Instagram page accused Davido of sending he further noted that several attacking attempts by the said guy was recorded on a security surveillance camera. This came three weeks after he called out Davido over an alleged death. He also made claims of Davido's refusal to pay for his songwriting contribution to an earlier release track, even after reaching out to the DMW bus privately. Dami has shared the same post on And that's all we have for you on the News on Spectrum Television. Do well to follow us on all our social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel, all of which you can find on our website at spectrumtv.ng. And you have been watching Spectrum News at 12. My name is Janice Coburn. Do have a great day.